Hey guys, new video here. I uh, want to talk about Synthesis League. It's been uh, over a day now since it launched, and I want to talk about like the things I like about it, things I uh, I think could be improved. I want to talk about possible uh, synthesis tile strategy and um, and how to go about the actual league mechanic, things like that. I just ended my stream and. Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about it. We figured some things out. I, I feel like I have like the very basic understanding. Now, this is not really meant to be a guide. It's just like what um, kind of just some like some topics on stream that, that came up that I think it's pretty interesting and and, uh, and worth discussing. So you guys can leave your feedback. And uh, and I I know I know um, like know everything about. That. I'd say I probably know twenty percent of what there is to know about the uh, the synthesis stuff, right? So, um, but let's get into it. So. Uh, initially, I think the good things about the league are that uh, um, the the mod, the, or sorry, the uh, the boss guy uh, Kavas, he's in every single zone, right? So if you go into a map, you are gonna find him guaranteed. He's really easy to find. He's got a map marker, and the zones are extremely quick, right? They're way quicker than a breach. They're way quicker than even an abyss uh, crack that might spawn. And then so when you go in there. Uh, you kind of know what you're going to get, and you know it's not going to be too much of a detour uh, past other things, right? So, uh, whereas, like, you know, sometimes I see people, like, skipping fortification encounters, things like that, um, because, like, it might not be something you want to do as a league mechanic. Uh, this league mechanic is very good, because uh, not only does it spawn monsters, the density is pretty good, um, and the uh, the drops and the affixes from the map go in there. So, for example, if you have a, a map with Beyond, uh, that, uh, the Kavas, when he opens a zone, he is also going to have Beyond in his zone. If your map is able to drop Humility, like you're running the Channies, uh, then you'll or um, your thing will also drop the uh, the divination card possibly. And I had a situation where like alleyways apparently dropped Saints Treasure now, right? And I went into an alleyways and I dropped a couple Saints Treasure. So even the big value cards uh, can be found in there. One little tiny note about that is in this league, if I don't believe that Saints Treasure dropped in alleyways before, but now that it does, um, does that mean that other cards are shifted around? Are cards uh, removed from other maps? Are they added to other maps? So it's like kind of kind of like uh, interesting for the for the map strategies if. If you're counting on a big Nivination card, which is part of a lot of people's strategies, farm a card that's like a uh, half decent layout, uh, or farm a map that's half decent layout and has a big Nivination card, you know, tower, uh, barrel chamber, Spody forest, uh, things like this, right? Uh, so that that's like uh, one thing I noticed. Now, um, the the boss the boss zones itself, I'm gonna call them boss zones, right? Or like let's just call them like league mechanic zones, right? The little the little blue wall of closing in around you. One big criticism uh, I have is that uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really all about pandering to like uh, new players, casual players, and things like that. But one criticism I have is that the wall uh, sometimes is too uh, too irregular. And what do I mean by that? So when you go into a zone, you have to hit uh, either uh, one, two, or three additional stabilizers, and that is actually how many uh, uh, junctions you get so for example if you hit two um uh two uh two memory uh stabilizers you will get a block like this or like this or like uh or like the other way like like this it is or like this it is a two road um two road junction here okay if you hit three you're obviously gonna get something like this right here this blood uh blood soaked arena memory where it's like three notes and then the very rare ones and i think a little bit too rare is a four noter so for example like the like the nexus itself is, is kind of like a, a pseudo four node right because it like can connect to anything but the four nodes make it so that like imagine you had like you had unlimited four notes like tetris right uh, where Tetris, the, the straight line block is the best one. If you had in the unlimited four noters, you could possibly just like place like massive squares and, and then use like the um like the tiny ones to get to the uh the uh, reward zones and it'd make it a little bit too OP. So four noters are, are a little bit are like definitely the strongest ones, right? Uh, but I can understand how they uh, they wouldn't give you too many of those, but it does feel a little bit more rare right now. Maybe in the higher tier maps, you have more chance of finding a four node uh, junction. Um, so so that's one thing I noticed. But another thing about the actual day to day gameplay, if you saw my last video about uh, my guy. So my dude's a um, Bane trickster. He moves uh, decently fast. Okay, he's not like he's not like super slow or anything. I'll show that later. Um, so he moves really fast. He's able to clear extremely fast. All the monsters die in one click. Essentially. 
essentially but um there is a number of times when if you just like barely graze a a small blue oval or circle in the middle of the map that was placed there uh you'll get kicked out immediately um the blue wall is very unforgiving so it will kick you within uh sometimes within it feels like less than a second right if you get unlucky if you're using movement skills you know leap slam flame dash whirling blades shield charge there could be some situation because like you can't like sometimes you can't directly shield charge through a door so if you get like this is notorious in the um the toxic sewer layouts where you can't like directly go from point a through that door you have to like kind of charge to the side and then aim yourself in right or walk yourself in and these movement skills uh lead to, the, to a situation where you can accidentally charge into the blue wall when you don't want to and then you'll lose um you know, for God forbid, you you lose a four junction uh, node because you accidentally like use a movement skill and and it didn't give you enough time, right? Uh, also, another thing that I've I've noticed in here is that if you go into a um, let, let's say you go into a uh, a Kavas, uh, spawned area and you notice that it says hit three, which the initial one you always have to hit, so you always have one already, right? So the let's say it's a three noder, so you have to hit two nodes, okay? Um, there's no indicator in which direction it might be uh and what i mean by that so you know how uh torah like in the previous expansion when you when torah was like hunt down these beasts use their blood to track down uh the beast right it would give you that wide angle uh arrow which like you could tell the general direction but it didn't like exactly go to it right and so i feel like something like that could be uh helpful in these uh nodes because um, the best way right now that I found, uh, especially if it is a one node, which is, which is actually a two junction, but it's like hit two memory stabilizers, right? The initial one when you spawn in, which you always hit. It's like kind of gonna be kind of weird, like the terminology we use because a two node is essentially just a one node because you always hit that first node when you spawn in. But anyway, I digress. Let's say it's a it's a two node, right? You have to, you hit the one initially. And you have to find one more somewhere in the map. The best way that you can do that right now, because there's no map markers, is you wait at the beginning and you look to see if one side of the blue is moving in. For example, right here, like let's say I, I spawn in here, right? I, I touch the memory stabilizer. The best way to find out which way it kind of is, is let's say this right side blue wall, this is a really bad example because it's all, it's all already like filled in, right? But um, let's say the right side is moving at you a lot faster than the left side right that means that you probably don't want to go this way that's like uh, you, you it's probably the memory stabilizer the other one is in the uh the left side and, and um on, on the flip side of that if the if the blue if the blue wall is moving in from the left side or like the bottom or the top you know the opposite direction is usually the way to go but sometimes it's not always the case depending on the number of junctions and also it's sometimes not the case um if it's like uh if it's if the map and the layout is big so it's a little bit weird because if you take a wrong turn and especially uh especially dangerous in the toxic sewer or the underground layouts right because the um the enclosures are not open uh, i'll give you an example here let me just go to to the nexus uh let me go back here okay and essentially let's see the nexus so let's say that this zone right here is the um is, is the uh, kavas open region so you start here you hit the memory stabilizer and um and if it's an open area like this it's great because the 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 wall the blue wall is not going to close off a passageway right if i if i go over here okay and it's not over here okay no big deal i can just run over here without being obstructed i can run over here i can check but a lot of these layouts are underground like cavernous um toxic sewer layouts where the um pathing is one tunnel in certain directions so so if I go over here and the blue wall comes up from the south like this and it cuts off my my exit I can't just like sometimes I can't just go around like this right I have to go backwards and if I go backwards because I ch I because of the luck of the draw I chose to go this way instead of to the right um, then the blue wall will actually um, make it almost impossible I want to say near impossible uh, to get over there now uh, there are things you can do where you can if you flame dash over a um, or leap slam uh, over a blue puddle that would otherwise kick you out it will um it will not kick you out right so you have that range on the flame dash so imagine the waypoint is the blue goo where if i stand in it i get kicked out i could flame dash over it and that actually gets you a little bit extra area that can save you it's like a platformer right it can get you to the next area and this is a system that i think um can be a little bit frustrating because my character is not really slow when i'm when i'm cruising and I, i'm like going, I, I have a biscuit's leash i have the movement speed um so the character clears very fast and so if a character is not very fast like let's say you're playing um 
uh, like a trapper or something that has a little bit of delay on the, um, the like on, on the impetus of of like uh, uh, you know getting to the enemy or whatever. Uh, then you, you might not like this, right? I feel like a lot of players will not like the uh, the blue wall mechanic because it's a little bit too unforgiving. I know Chris was talking about how they were like the developers were going back and forth on what they should do with that, and I think they'll they'll probably like settle on something uh, later on in the league as they get more feedback and things like that. But these are just my initial thoughts for someone who's gonna who's goes pretty fast uh, in the maps and in the zones where sometimes it just feels like you have you have there's no way that you can get uh, uh, that you can get back to find the other node and the and and then the the memory collapses a little bit too fast right and um and so that that's one criticism uh, i have of it another one is um these blocks right so the way the blocks work is that um the so we'll talk a little bit about like uh, block strategy and like how to go about setting up your pathing for maybe like returns or going for rewards right and this is once again this is very much in the air this is just like uh, like just like thoughts from the last day or so and i'm sure over the next week or two people will find like the most meta uh ways to do things but here are my initial thoughts uh just from playing the game a lot i initially think that the uh this system was like kind of like kind of like boring because um like initially, let's say you place this this uh, pack, right, uh, or this uh, zone. It is monster pack size ten percent, quantity twenty four percent. It just sucks. Like the mods are like n nothing really special. It just is a horrible zone. And it's forty percent of the map, you know, feels feels kind of fair to say that it's about forty percent of a map on average. Um, it's just not something you want to run. So I was like, eh, what are these areas, right? And as I chain them together, I was like, um, I, I was like, they all kind of look like this. I was like, wait a minute, like what what does that mean, right? Like it's just like it's just pretty bad. But then when you start looking at the memory uh, modifiers, which is this icon, I'm going to call this the, uh, this looks like a, kind of like an M to me. So these like these M icons in red and the big M's are like the, uh, double or more uh, modifiers on there. Uh, when you link them up to here, you will add affixes. So um, how does this work? Essentially, you can think of. Uh, you can think of the reward zones, right? They're, they're the, they always have this blue uh, glowing in and out, meaning there's only one charge left because you only get one try to, to link it. If you link um, to these memory modifiers, what will happen is that every single tile set that is touching, um, that that is connected to it, will get a modifier. What do I mean by that? So let's say that um, uh, I'm just going to pull up a... Um, I'm gonna pull up a little diagram here of what I uh, what I did um, earlier on stream. So let's say that um, let's say that all all these are connected. You see these like these are all things I set down like here, 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 here. You see how all these are connected right here, and then it connects over here. If I were to connect this node right here to this node and possibly this node even if I had like the right piece here and then do them both. If I do these mem these two memory modifiers here their affixes that they grant the zones would propagate to every single tile set in the chain, okay? Best way to think about this is that the M icons are sextants. And once you proc them, if you succeed in finding the, um, it, what, what it'll look like is, here, hold on, actually, let me, let me do this. What it'll look like is um, when you get to like the, the zone in here, let's say this is the M zone and you find the memory stabilizer, right next to the memory stabilizer will be the memory modifier. It'll be either like one or two nodes or something like that. And you touch them and it's like, you can imagine like adding a sextant to the map, except for, you know how sextant does everything in the radius. Um, what this does is that it will, um, this memory will, will add the sextant modifier, right? We can call it that, to everything in the chain, every single one. So. Let me pull this up again. Uh, so for for like this example, like all these down here, and this one, and this one, and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, right? This nexus is not a real zone, so it doesn't actually work. And so this got me thinking, like this is pretty cool because like how how good could these um, could these modifiers be, right? And they are actually pretty good. So let me just take this one for example. This didn't like take me that long to make, but initially um, in the first part, the first like uh, we'll call it the uh, the darker blue text. That's like the normal um, the normal mod. And then the light blue, these mods, like all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, these mods were granted from memory nodes. And um, so 
So basically, you can kind of see that um, they're like a it's like a sexton property. It's like a, it's like a map role, and you can add. From what I can tell, you can add a lot, right? You can I think you can add more than the actual. Um, uh, I believe you can add more than the actual limit on a map, which is I, I think eight mods. I haven't really tested it enough because I don't have like the blocks for it. Um, but I will be I will be testing this out, and I think you just like keep adding um, affixes to this. Now, why is this important? It's important because. Um, I think the overall strategy should not think of the synthesis as a um, farm 10 maps, which is 10 blocks. Um, you should think of it as a more long-term strategy. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, I mean that, let's say I have some square pieces, I have uh, some four connectors or some four, three, four junctions, and I create, let's say, a, um, a, a connected zone of whatever shape. I mean, probably a square is the best because you can just run through it without having to zone back in. Um, but let's say I create uh, some long chain over here, okay? And, and prefer, once I'm preferably uh, a loop so that you can, you can run around. And then I put them down. And let's say they have like two or three uh, runs in them. I put them down. Most people would probably just like run them, like connect them once and then run them. But I think the best thing to do and something that'd be really juicy to, to try out later would be you put down your nodes and then you branch out in another direction and you hit as many memory modifiers as possible to juice up your um, your your set. So you can think of like a, a initial set that you place down. Let's just say it's these these uh uh, these four nodes right here. Okay, this is just an example. Overall, once again, I want like five to ten. But you would take these connected nodes, and this would be your initial map pool. And everything else else you do away from that base map pool is going to be map rolling. You can think about it like that. And then so the the strategy would be: I do not touch my initial map pool. Right, I just leave them connected. And I branch out to as many memory things as I can. Now, this could, this varies by RNG because you need the pieces. Uh, you need to have like the spawns. Hopefully, you want the bigger spawns that have multiple memory modifiers, right? Multiple sextants. And you do this over and over until I don't know if there's a limit. I, I honestly don't know if there's a limit on the affixes you can add. I hope there's not. That'd be hilarious, right? And if you could like stack the same one for increasing percentages. But let's say there's a there's just like some arbitrary limit on there, right? You would stack it until your map pool is the is maxed out and then you'd go through in a, in a loop and then do it like what two three times however many uh however many uh iterations there are on that uh on that block right and then you do it all over again so this might take you um you know 10 20 30 40 blocks to to really juice it up because if you see the rule is uh they said you can only have 25 pieces placed on the uh on this tile set right so if you look at how many i have here let's say uh, let's just say I have a block of, I make a block of 10, right? This is only, this is only four right here, I guess five. But let's say I make a square, a kind of squarish shape of 10. And um, I leave the 10 here. So I have 15 more. Well, how many does it take to get to these distant memories? Well, let's just count. It, uh, in a best case scenario, it would take one, two, three, four, let's say five, six, seven, eight right let's just say like nine ten let's, let's just say it takes ten right on, on, a, on a bad day so you will of course you need the bad bricks but if it takes ten you still have five extra ones to play with to like mess around with right so i think it's actually gonna be quite easy to set up a, a chain of like maybe 10 in one direction it doesn't have to be this direction you set up a, a, a chain of uh, i don't know 10 plus in one direction of this layout and then you go in the other direction whichever one has more of these m icons here and you connect all the m icons together and you and and remember you have to complete the m icon like once you, once you enter the zone when you enter the zone and proc the first um, uh, memory stabilizer to activate that that uh, destabilizing zone uh, to find the memory modifier, you need to have everything connected at that time. Okay, you cannot have ghost copies. Like for example, if I put down like some ghost copy here, right, and I hit this one. Uh, and I'm, I'm here for some reason, but there's a ghost copy here. It would not give affixes to a ghost copy. It has to be placed. Now, um, a, a good way to like know if it's placed is it's solid, right? But 
Um, one of one of the weird things is like if you need to like delete a memory, you can always right click and, de and delete it completely. Um, if you need to delete things from here, the way that I found is like you can't you can't delete the things in your box, right? And since there's only you can only have ten blocks in your box, the best way to get rid of um, like bad blocks that you're not going to use right away is that you can go to your nexus and let's say I want to get rid of um, uh, let, let's just say what would be a good one. Let, let's just say I'm actually Mm, wait, hold on. Which one of these actually connects? Like when you click it, it tells you where it goes. Okay, let's let's just, you waste this one real quick. So just for the purposes of this video. So let's say I want to get here to this. See this memory modifier? Or, okay, sorry. This is a bad example because it's here. But let's say I wanted to get rid of this piece because it sucks. This this piece is actually really good. So I'm gonna place it. I'm gonna hit this. And now look. When you hit the um, the little node, it sets it. So it's no longer a ghost copy. And now this has been completely removed from my inventory. You see that? If, you, if it's a ghost copy, it'll stay in your inventory and take up one of your 10 slots, which is really bad. So now what I'll do in this example, um, uh, just, to, just to reiterate it, because I know it's kind of confusing. Let's say that this, 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 and this is my initial block, right? And I want to add affixes to these. So I'll go through here and I'll make sure that I'll do this zone and make sure at the time that I complete the zone, there is connections between my map pool, okay? That's how you do it. Um, kind of criticism of this system is, uh, once again, I don't know if this is the best, but it seems like pretty exciting to me because you can add tons of affixes um, to the each zone, is that the blocks are pretty bad RNG. Like I was like, there was this time when, let me bring up my thing. Um, where is the picture? There was a time when I was like trying to get over here or like I was trying to like link, I think it was like this piece right here. I needed a uh, northwest southeast connector. That's all I needed. And it took me like like quite a few maps to get it, right? Because the RNG was bad. I kept getting pieces that were flipped in the other direction. So the RNG can hinder your, um, your, your I guess we'll call it the map pool uh, and the growth of your uh, map pool affixes and, and um, the sections of things quite a bit and uh so so that kind of sucked okay so other things with this system is um i, I have to I have to kind of like go into a little bit of the details of uh, things I've noticed like annoyances and and little tips and tricks so if you leave an item on the ground as long as it's not thrown on the ground because your inventory is full when you end the thing and click on a memory stabilizer again all the items in that zone will be dropped at that you can think of it like an incursion um like like an incursion zone right except for you have to click on the actual memory stabilizer um uh, other things to know is that there are some instances where you need to be it is directional so what do i mean by this let's look at this block right here so let's say that i was in this block and um it was uh, destabilizing because what what destabilizing means is that like the nodes that have the blue blur around them, the one means that that it, when you activate it, it's gonna start collapsing on itself, right? If it has more than one, it'll never expire. Okay, so what I mean by that is like if you go in here, this says two, right? If I go in there, and activate it, I have all the time in the world. I, if as long as my computer doesn't crash or my game doesn't crash, um, uh, <clears throat> I can leave my character in that zone and it will not the blue wall will not come get me. Okay, until I. Uh, uh, complete the zone and like maybe um, go and then do it again or whatever okay you have all the time in the world as long as it's not decaying memory and so what I noticed is that if it is a decaying memory though and the blue is coming in you need to um, activate a stabilizer sometimes that's in the correct direction so um, this is kind of like hard to think about here but let me do an example um, uh, let, let's just do an example um, I don't know. This is kind of hard to explain. Okay, let's just take this. Like, let's say that I was, um, I was in here, and I wanted to to connect to, um, I wanted to connect to like here, right? This memory right here. If if the memory, I if the memory stabilizer I click is in this quadrant, right? Like, I'm gonna just. <laughs> this is really hard to explain. Let's say that this is the uh, this is the block, right? This is uh, this block right here, and I the everything's breaking down, and I go to the southwest stabilizer here, and I click on it, okay? And then the blue wall comes in, so it will look like this. Okay, I'll show you what it looks like. The blue wall comes in, and now you're stuck, right? You get all your loot, you're stuck here. But if this memory stabilizer was on this side and not on this side or on the northeast side 
you wouldn't be able to get back there. So, so this memory stabilizer that's on the south uh, west side would not allow you to get to these connected memories um, in some cases. So I, I think that system's kind of weird. Um, maybe I'm just being like bad at the game. I don't know, but it's happened a lot, right? Because because when that blue wall is coming, uh, you you kind of you know you kind of booking it and. And sometimes you just end up at one stabilizer versus the other, right? So that's uh, that's one criticism I have of that. Uh, another thing is that the the limit of these blocks is too low. I think uh, if it was like 20, 30, that'd be pretty good. Or if it was 10, at least it allows us to rotate them. That's probably really hard for the coding. But um, 10 blocks is simply uh, it's simply a hassle. It's like you spend like you're gonna spend so much time like planning and things like that. Um, and then like obviously there's this helper, right? Like you can you can click on it and see where it can go, but uh, 10 is a little bit too low unless we can rotate, all right? Maybe I'll give us 20 or 30 of them, and, and then that would be mm, closer to, to a fair amount. Um, other things to talk about in here, um, I, I like the system overall. The monsters are cool. Um, I, I think that they're well designed. The, the, mm, the effects are really nice. The reward rooms, I've heard of people getting some really nice rewards out of these. So another strategy is you're like more casual. You don't want to like build up your map pool or whatever with the, the affixes. You can just like choose a distant um, chest thing, right? Like, like these M's you think about it as sextants for connected zones. These icons are actual items. So I've heard of people getting like 50 silver coins from a chest, you know, people getting some nice unique items from chests, like Prance coins, whatever, what have you, right? Uh, from just the chest. So you very well could, if you don't care about any of this stuff, you just use your blocks after you get 10 and you just go on one, like you, you don't do a multi-layered strategy. You just do like your 10 blocks, you get to a chest room, you open the chest, you had some fun, you go into your maps again, you do whatever, and then you do it over and over again. You don't have to build up your affixes. But I really think that the the affix system is going to be really cool to play with because, I mean, look at this, right? This didn't take me uh, any... Uh, this didn't take me any uh, time at all, uh, really, to make this note, and it's got a, it's got a crap ton of affixes on there, right? So, um, and and I know that there's like things with uh, experience, there's things like pack size, there's like things with uh, currency drops. So I I think it's gonna be a fantastic system to um to, uh, to work with, right? It's just it's just got a little bit of um weird stuff in it right now, okay? So. So yeah, uh, that, that's just like my initial thoughts on it and, and what I'm going to be doing later on stream to try to figure this this all out because I really think with 25 tiles on the map, you can build up some crazy affixes. Um, it's just going to be the the best way to structure your map pool, best way to like reach these, and then how, how much am I going to want to deal with the RNG of getting bad blocks, right? And oh, let me oh, let me also show you something. So um, it, l l in this example, I forgot to mention something. Let's say this is a block that I don't want. I, I hate this block. I just want to get rid of it and get it out of my inventory. Remember, placing down a ghost node does not remove it from inventory, right? It's just like kind of like a guide. What you can do is you can place it down and then once it's placed down uh, to close to your nexus so you don't have to travel at all, just right click it and then you delete it. And then that's basically you, you place on top of your nexus delete place delete place delete if you want to get rid of blocks for some reason okay uh, and so that's one thing I'll say so that's the video that's all I want to uh, say about it you can probably like uh, once again this is day one right so I don't really know anything uh, in a week there'll be like those huge guides coming out um, you know betrayal took like a week or so and then we had those charts we had like the guides how to farm harbor bridge action so uh, I hope you guys enjoy the league I think it's gonna be pretty good I hope it's not too overwhelming for some people some new players and I hope you guys enjoy the video okay bye bye everyone thanks for watching bye